بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقادا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طبيلا رحمتك يا أرحم الراح First I would like to congratulate you for the very uh, a special occasion and that is the birth anniversary of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. This is one of the most joyful days in the calendar, especially for those who are actively waiting for coming of Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. This brings, you know, a special energy and joy, uh, and helps them with their intezar. We know that in our tradition, in our, uh, you can say, a scriptures. A very important idea is that when you are united with someone in your thoughts, in your love, in your devotion, in your aims and objectives, then nothing can stop you joining that person. Time cannot stop you. Geographical distance cannot separate you. Death not only cannot separate you, even can facilitate. When two people have the same outlook to the life, when there is love, when there is devotion, nothing can separate them. So we are connected, insha'Allah, to Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam and insha'Allah to all the prophets and messengers as well and all the believers throughout the history. The second point is that we feel that we have a responsibility out of love, out of devotion to help any person that in this group calls for help. Because this is one battle and we are present in the same battle between light and darkness, truth and falsehood. And even if our time is different, our distance is different because the same battle and we are participants in the same battle. So we should be available for answering to any call for help. As also other people would help us if we ask for help. Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura he asked for help. Of course his you know, call for help was not limited to day of Ashura but that was the peak of it otherwise you know from the time he left Medina 
he was practically, even if he didn't, for example, put it in words, in need of help and asking for help. But the day of Ashura, especially when all the companions and members of Ahlul Bayt were able to help, were martyred, so Imam asked for help. Hal min nasirin yansurun. And we, although are very sad that we had no opportunity to help him in person, there is you know, big time difference between us. But on the other hand, we are aware that still we can respond or na'udhu billah fail to respond. This call for help is still there. Because it's the same battle, the same cause. Imam Hussein didn't have a cause which was just limited to him or you know that uh, you know locality. It was a universal call. So we need to help him, and we need to help Imam Mahdi, Allah Taala Farajahu Sharif, as he is continuing the same line. Uh, in the book Connection between Imam Hussein and Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif which is you know published recently in uh, January Alhamdulillah but we had you know some papers and lectures before I have quoted a hadith from Imam Hussein alayhi salam that I am going to read for you. This hadith uh, is what in the night of Ashura, Imam Hussein alayhi salam quoted from gra his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He said, this is on the page 49 of the book, قد قال جدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله ولدي حسين يقتل بطف كربلا غريبا وحيدا عطشانا فريدا My grandfather, messenger of Allah, said that my son Hussein will be killed in Karbala while he is alone and thirsty and abundant, means in that lonely time. And then he said, Faman Nasarahu, whoever helps him, Fakad Nasarani, wa Nasara Valadahu Qa'in. Whoever helps Hussein has helped me and has helped his son, Imam Mahdi. So you see, helping Imam Hussein is helping Rasulullah. Helping Rasulullah is helping Imam Hussein. Hussein non minni wa anna min Hussein. Helping Imam Hussein is helping Imam Mahdi. Helping Imam Mahdi is helping Imam Hussein. These are the signposts that you should consider so that you make sure that what you are doing is right. So if, for example, we do something for Imam Hussein, which would damage Islam or you know divide Muslim Ummah, weaken Muslim unity, this is not helping Imam Hussein because you have to help Imam Hussein in the way that helps Rasulullah, in the way that helps Islam. Or if you do something that would not help Imam Mahdi, would not prepare the world for coming of Imam Mahdi, that there is no you know kind of progress, there is no kind of movement, you are stuck, this is not helping Imam Hussein in the right way, because helping Imam Hussein in the right way should help Imam Mahdi. So, this is very beautiful hadith. فَمَنْ نَصَرَهُ فَقَدْ نَصَرَنِي وَنَصَرَ وَلَدَهُ الْقَائِمُ Whoever helps Hussein has helped me and has helped his son Imam Mahdi. Now, how we want to help him? The text that you see on the screen explains the way we should be offering help. In one of the ziyarat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, which we find in one of our very important sources, 
تحذیب الاحکام You know we have کتب اربعه Four major collections of hadith in early centuries One of the four books is تحذیب الاحکام By great عالم شیخ الطائفه شیخ توسی Actually, Sheikh Tusi has two of, compiled two of those four. Al-Istibsar and Tahdib. So, we are talking about one of Kutub Arba'ah, one of our very important sources of Hadith. Over there, we say to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, this is page 58 of volume 6. السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله Peace be upon you the son of messenger of Allah <coughs> Salam is very important concept and I hope inshallah you have had some studies some you know reflections on the concept of salam it's very important إِلَّمْ أَكُنْ أَدْرَكْتُ نُصْرَتَكَ بِيَدِي If I was not there, so I missed the opportunity to help you with my hand. لَمْ أَكُنْ أَدْرَكْتُ I missed helping you with my hand. So physically, I was not present in that time and that place. To help you. Faha anadha wafidun ilayka bin nusrati. But here I am coming to you with my help. So it's not uh, something sad which has no continuity. I missed opportunity, finished. No. I missed opportunity. But there is another opportunity. For those who want, there is no end, you know, like, you know, road. There's no blockage. The path is open. Qad ajabaka Qalbi Vasamri وَبَصَرِي وَبَدَنِي وَرَعِي وَحَوَاي عَلَى التَّسْلِيمِ لَكَ وَالْخَلَفِ الْبَاغِي مِنْ بَعْدِكَ الْأَدِلَّاءِ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ وُلْدِكَ Here I am to help. Here I am. To offer my help. My heart has responded to your call. With my heart, I am there to offer help. With my ear, with my eyes, with my body, with my opinion, with my desires. I am at your service. And submissive to your will. You show me the direction. I already, of course, know part of the direction. But I am happy to receive continuously direction. By being submissive to you and your progeny who come after you. Who guide towards God. From Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam up to Imam Mahdi. Especially because Imam Mahdi is now Baqi and Baqiyatullah. And for our time he is the Hujja of Allah. So we have more responsibilities towards Imam Mahdi now 
as Imam Sadiq even said, that lo adraktuhu la khadamtuhu. If I was there in the time of Imam Mahdi, I would have served him. Although his uh, children, you know, as a grand grand child of Imam Sadiq, but if he, Imam Sadiq was in the time that Imam Mahdi is Hoja, he would have listened to him and served him. Fanusrati lakum muadda. My help for you is ready, is prepared. Not that you tell me what should I do, then I go to learn, I go to prepare myself. No. I have come with my help. You know, sometimes someone says, tell me what can I do to help you. For example, he says something, then you said, you know, I don't know, but let me go and ask. Or let me go and learn and come back. It may take you know, a few days or it may take a few years, but I'm going to learn and come back. For example, maybe a marja says, I want to send an alim to, for example, Madagascar. We have a brother from Madagascar. He says, okay, I need someone who can speak you know, French, who knows the culture there. And someone says, I don't know French. I don't know the community there. I don't know the culture there. Uh, if you give me a few months, maybe six months, nine months, I will work hard and prepare myself. Okay, that's good. That's when there is such a dedication. But this person cannot say, Nusrati lakum mu'adda. This person cannot say, Wafadun ilayka bin Nusrati. Although he is already 80, 90% ready. He has studied, he has you know, experience, but even because part of preparation is not there, he cannot say, my help is ready. I am at your service. I am a standby. No. What we are saying to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, which is a kind of instruction, this is a kind of prescription, is that I am there to help you. My help is ready. And this help has no restriction. First of all, my heart is with you. I have emptied my heart from ego, from any selfishness, from any prejudice, from any bias. My heart is yours. My ears are there to help me understand what needs to be done and how it should be done. My eyes are at the service of this cause. My entire body, my opinion. I don't have any personal, selfish, tribal, sectarian opinion. And my even desires. So much dedication is there that even this person's desires is no longer desire of nafsa ammare. This hawa is not nafsa ammare. Quran says, Afara'ayta man ittakhada ilahahu hawa. Have you seen the people who have adopted their hawa, their Lord desires as the Lord? But a true lover of Ahlul Bayt, his hawa is with them, is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not like someone that his hawa is self-centered, is egoistic, and they are worshipping their hawa. This is for people who are selfish, people who are, you know, biased. Our hawa, our love, our joy, our pleasure is purified for the cause. When do we become happy? When do we become sad? There are people that when they commit a sin, they become happy. 
There are people that, if they are do, you know, supposed to do something good, for example, I do not to observe hijab or to fast or to give zakat or homes, etc., they may not do it, or even if they do it, they may you know, feel this very painful. Because their hawa is to go and you know, do other things. Maybe they have enough of basic level of taqwa that they do these things but with pressure. But someone who can help is someone that has got rid of these things and his hawa is pure, his desire is pure. If he can do something good, he feels happy. If he misses doing something good, feels bad. If he helps other people, he feels very good. If he is studying, teaching, sharing, meeting mu'mineen, helping needy people, he is very happy. And the sign of this is that you don't feel drained. You know, if your desire is not pure, even if you force yourself to do good, you feel your energy is taken away. You say, how many people I should help? I'm tired of helping people. Maybe you don't say it, but you feel you're tired. You know, I have to help, you know, my, I don't know, father, mother, siblings, neighbor. How many people I should, why no one is helping me? How many people I should love? Why no one you know, loves me? You feel drained. This shows that still your hawa is not pure. Otherwise, if you have been connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam love just overflows. You are looking for opportunities to help. You know, there are two different types of people. Some people force themselves to help. Some people looking for opportunities to help because there is something overflowing. This love needs to be spread. This knowledge, this uh, Truth, light has to spread. Okay? Like when a mother feeds her baby, doesn't feel bad. A mother when feeds the baby feels very happy. A generous person when feeds hungry people feels very happy. A miserly person when feels, uh, feeds hungry people feels painful. It feels, you know, something is going away. He's, you know, missing something. So, if we want to help Ahlul Bayt, in particular Imam Hussein and Imam Mahdi, Sharif, we need to work on our hearts, on our ears, on our eyes, entire body. What I am smelling, what I am teaching, uh, touching, what I am you know tasting. What goes to my stomach, what goes to my ear, all are important. What is my opinion? Is my opinion based on personal interest, tribal interest, or my opinion is at the service of the cause? Imagine if you are working for a company and you are in charge of, for example, contracts. You cannot base your opinions on your selfish interests. The company says you have only to consider the interests of the community within the regulations. Of course, even interests of uh, some, maybe companies are not 100% pure. But if they are themselves, you know, observing moral rules, legal rules, everything, then they say you have to consider our interest, not interest of yourself. For example, maybe you are working in an office for government. You cannot behave in the way that you shift the budget to your own city, for example, because your opinion is biased. If I am a Shia from Iran or Iraq or, I don't know, Lebanon or Pakistan or anywhere, Khoja, whatever, I should love my country, my nation, my background, my mother tongue. There is no problem with that, to love them. But this love should not be exclusive. This love should not 
make me uncomfortable to connect to other Shia, to welcome other Shia. Not welcome them just to my place, welcome them to my heart. Because my opinion and my desire should be at the service of Allah and the cause. So there are lots of things that we need to do to be able to say honestly to our Imams that how another and if you are able to say this honestly, it doesn't matter whether you are today or you were on the day of Ashura in Karbala or you are going to be next to Imam Mahdi, it doesn't matter. Because as I said, time is not dividing or separating. It's distance also. Once one of the companions of Imam Ali alayhi salam told him after you know a battle, I wish my brother was with us. Imam Ali alayhi salam said, Ahava Ahi Kama'ana. Hawa, we just talked about Hawa. Is the desire of your brother with us? Does he want to be with us? Okay, I repeat. A person said to Amirun after one of the battles that I wish my brother was with us. Imam said, Ahawa Ahi Kama'ana. Is his desire to be with us? Or basically, his desires are with us? Means he wants the same thing that we want? He said yes. Then Imam said, Shahidana. He was present with us. He was not separate from us. He was in another place. But Imam says, Shahidana. He was Shahid, he was present. Vashahidamana. أَقْوَامٌ فِي أَسْلَابِ الرِّجَالِ سَيَرْعَفُ بِهِمُ الزَّمَانِ Also, there were people with us that still are not born. They will come later. They are also with us. So when I say, if you say this honestly, you will be with Imam Hussein, I'm not exaggerating. I am saying the fact. And it's like being with Imam Mahdi when he comes. So my question for you is to work, maybe not today, I don't know how much time you have, but maybe you work on this about what are the implications of being able to say Nusrati lakum mu'adda. My help is ready for you, is prepared for you. And in particular, what this means that I should do with my heart, with my ear, with my eyes, with my body, with my opinion, with my desires. And then you say what then this means that you need to change in your life. Of course, some of the things maybe are personal. You don't need to say it everyone, but for yourself you can find. Some of the things you can say, share with other people. Because I'm sure you cannot say, I am ready. No, I'm sure you find that there are things that you must change. Either by stopping certain things, and starting other things, or by adding, by increasing, yeah, certainly we need change. So, how can we understand practical implications of Nusrati lakum mu'adda, especially when it comes to heart, ear, etc., and what changes we need to bring to our personal life 
and also familial and communal life. This, I think, is very important, and especially if you ask Allah for help in this blessed time of month of Sha'ban, it would be great, and then it can be something helpful for the months of Ramadan before Laylatul Qad to decide and finalize for yourself as a plan, inshallah. Uh, if there are some questions, comments, uh, inshallah, for a few minutes, inshallah, we can discuss. I don't know how much time you have, but I can be here, you know, for some time, inshallah, and then I say, Khuda Hafiz. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Uh, may Allah bless you there, Sheikh. Uh, right now we have uh, Brother Ahmed Musavi who has raised his hands. Please proceed with your question. Alaikum as again. Again, it was really, really powerful, really wonderful uh, wisdom you have given us. I really liked how you mentioned that we have a responsibility to our brothers and to our sisters and to our community members to help them when they're in the times of need. So my question is, um, how can we assist, how can we help our brothers or sisters, our friends and peers who have almost, I don't want to say become, have become desperate or how, how can I say, essentially, how can we help those who have almost lost their faith in Allah's mercy? For their, for their saying that, oh, bro, I've sinned way too much, that there's no way Allah can forgive me, or how can we say that um, one person says that, bro, like, I'm not sure if I'm ready for them, I'm heading to the return. How can we help, help, help these types of people? Who have lost their hope in Allah's mercy? Yeah. Yeah. We have to see if there is any uh, problem in their understanding and aqidah, Sometimes people have some, you know, challenges in their aqidah. They are faced with some questions, etc. You know, that this needs to be clarified. Okay. For example, some people don't know why there is war in the world. Why Allah doesn't stop war? Why Allah doesn't help oppressed people? For example, immediately. Yeah. So this is the issue that we have to discuss and clarify for them. Like you know what we did in divine justice course. But sometimes it's not just theoretical. Maybe they know all these things, but their heart is not convinced. They, you know, they know they can answer you know, to these challenges. They can defend themselves, divine justice, but they are not in their heart feeling tranquility. I think the main help for such people is to see mercy of Allah in the way they are treated. If people receive love from family, from community, from friends, they would never question Allah's mercy. When they see believers are so kind, so helpful, yeah? if we really have, for example, social wilaya among us, then no one would feel Allah is not kind. He said, you know, even mu'mineen are very kind to me. They never, you know, let me alone and, you know, let me down. So. Definitely Allah is much greater. So sometimes people, unfortunately, are not in touch with good mu'mineen. And this affects their faith about God. Or na'udhu billah, sometimes they had, you know, problems with some people who claim that they are mu'min. And they say, oh, these are you know, religious people. Look at these religious people. They have no mercy. They have no honesty, etc. So it makes a big difference for people uh, how they are treated and how they see. I'm not saying uh, everyone is right because sometimes even people who have received you know, lots of kindness and attention, you know, unfortunately they are very pessimistic and very negative and very critical. Sometimes people have, you know, mental issues, etc. But generally speaking, if people are surrounded by caring, loving people, especially people who are religious, then 
they would not feel bad about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's our responsibility to extend this social wilaya to you know, every member of the community or at least to our contacts. It's very important. Thank you, thank you, Sheikh. So you said step one is to first, um, if the person is saying, well, it's, if it's a stand, if it's coming from a lack of mayafa, you can help them by establishing the mayafa taqira, saying, look, let's actually go into this. Let's see what is, uh, let's actually describe, let's actually see what Allah's mercy represents. Yes. But if it's, but if they have an understanding of, so if they had the mayafa of, let's say, a fire, let's say, with the example you used before is, uh, you can even describe it, they know how to explain fire, they know how to describe fire, if someone tells you, yo, this is fire, but if they not have felt, if they have not yet to have received the heat of fire, they won't necessarily know what it is, so you can help them by saying, hey, look, the love that I give you, the tranquility I give you only comes from Allah. So being that good person, showing them the tenants of Allah. Even maybe you don't need to tell them mm. that this comes from Allah. Yeah. They feel it, you know. You, you do it na naturally because they shouldn't feel that you want to change them, you know. <laughs> uh, Definitely. And then the, another point you mentioned was uh, changing your environment and changing the people you're surrounded by. Exactly. Uh, because if you're surrounded by quote unquote religious people who just say just say all these wonderful things but their character is negative mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't like you don't like Muhammad, and so try you can find people that that will show this love to you yeah thank you may Allah bless you inshallah Asante, may Allah bless you uh, next brother uh, Ali Shaheen Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. My question is not uh, uh, related to the subject uh, at hand, but I've had it for a while actually. Um, he mentions, <clears throat> sorry, okay. about uh, dreams that your subconscious it can make connections. Yani between if I see, for example, I connect apple to knowledge, then if I see an apple in my dream, it could mean. Uh, knowledge and he used this as a reason why if I have a dream and you have a dream the exact same dream hypothetically speaking that uh, the interpretation for my dream can be different than your dream now how can different people how can people who interpret dreams who aren't masumin how do they make these connections and yani are they do they have specific uh, arfani levels for example and uh, also can non people who aren't Shia can they reach this level of uh, Arfan, like uh, Sunni, our brothers from Ahlul Sunnah or uh, Sufis, for example. Yeah. You know, there are some of the things which are general, and um, if you uh, study, you can learn some of the general things, you know, f uh, about dreams. For example, if you dream a child, if you dream, for example, I don't know fire if you dream your tooth is you know coming out you know if it's bleeding not bleeding some of these things are general and you can learn but there is a special uh, insight needed for interpreting dreams like what Allah gave to Yusuf alayhi salam that he was able to go beyond the general level and interpret things that not everyone was able to understand. Even many people who used to interpret dreams for the uh, you know, king or for Pharaoh, they couldn't interpret this one, okay? So this needs a kind of insight, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And maybe people for different reasons have this gift. Those who learn from others, they don't need to be faithful. They learn, but to receive this gift, from Allah, there must be a good reason in you. Uh, it doesn't have to be definitely a person who is just Shia, but must be a faithful person, at least to best of his knowledge, you know, he's following the path, etc. But between two sides, the one which is acquired and the one which is gifted, 
you know, there's a border. Many people are on the first level. They learn it. But the second one is gifted. It's, a, it's like istikhara also. Some people have a special gift. Even when people ask for istikhara, before opening the Quran, they know the answer. Yeah, this is gift. This is not, not we can learn. I see. Thank you, Maulana. You're welcome. May Allah bless you, Sheikh. Thank you so much. Brother Ali Jumai, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. So, my question is actually not related to the topic either. But um, my question is uh, like, can you walk forward in a mosque? Because, like, in, I heard somewhere that, like, if you enter a mosque and they already started praying and then you just take your morning, you could do takbir to ahram and then go walk forward and join the namaz. So mean when you have distance with Salat al Yeah. You, you should check your marjad because uh, they may not allow if there is uh, distance. Maybe you are in oh. the, you, you, your distance is not too long, but still you are not the right place. You can, you know, a little bit maybe, uh, for example, you know, move without causing problem to the uh, hay uh, form of salat. But uh, if you have to, for example, you know, walk 20 meters to reach, this might be problematic. But okay. you can, you, you can check if you. If you don't find the answer, uh, inshallah, let me, let brad, uh, through Brother Jawad, I will find. And your, mention your marja, I will check and let you know. Okay, thank you. May Allah bless you. Allah bless you. Thank you. Ahsan, Brother Ali Jumaa. Inshallah, next brother, Brother uh, Habib. Assalamu alaikum, Shah. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. I'm Francais because I'm French. So, uh, I think, uh, inshallah, Brother Jawad will be very good for me. Did you understand uh, my talk? Yes, I understand. Okay, alhamdulillah. I think it's a question that has a relationship with the divine justice. Because we have done it in a lecture. And I've seen Sayyid Murtada Mutahari define the justice. I'm going to paraphrase because I don't have exactly the definition in my head. Définie comme étant euh, la, la donnée, genre Dieu met euh, une charge sur une personne dépendamment de sa capacité à supporter. Est-ce qu'ici on peut traduire capacité par sa pureté ou. Voilà, ça c'est ma première question. Et ma. Où il répond, je enchaîne les deux questions. Enchaîne les deux questions, s'il te plaît. Okay. La deuxième question c'est par rapport à l'intellect. Euh, les, tous les philosophes ont essayé de définir l'homme. Et j'aimerais dire que tout ce qu'ils ont cherché à trouver, c'est qu'ils ont cherché à trouver la singularité de l'homme euh, en se référant à l'animal. En checkant l'animal, ils, ils ont essayé de trouver la singularité. Et je viens à dire euh, dans euh, le livre de Cher Cholini, dans lequel on disait que... Tu m'entends ou... Oui, je t'entends absolument, continue. Et dans lequel on disait que l'ange Dibré a apporté comme l'intellect euh, je crois la, la religion et un, un autre truc et euh, le, le prophète Adam il a choisi l'intellect je veux savoir comment est-ce que le prophète Adam a pu choisir l'intellect a pu faire un choix sans intellect c'est à dire sans discernement euh, parce qu'on peut, on peut faire des discernements sans, euh, sans intellect comment il a pu faire un choix comment il a pu choisir l'intellect sans, euh, sans intellect je comprends pas ouais. Parfait, c'est une très bonne question, merci beaucoup. Uh, so there, Sheikh, uh, our brother has asked. Yes. Okay. Alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum, salam, rahmatullah. How are you? Good. Mashallah, happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. Mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> so, uh, so the question that uh, the brother asked. Yes. Okay, but good. Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Sorry, Sheikh. No problem. <laughs> Salam alaikum, mashallah. How are you? Good. <laughs> Very happy to see you, mashallah. May Allah bless you, Sheikh. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So, basically, the two questions that Brother Habib has asked 
The first one is in relationship to the course of divine justice by uh, uh, Ayatollah Mutahiri. He said, uh, how do, uh, did, uh, was he explaining the concept of capacity uh, basically in determining justice or understanding the concept of divine justice? Is it based on uh, the level of purity or it is, or is it basically on giving capacity by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's the first question. For understanding. Yes, yes Sheikha. Mm. For understanding justice, you mean? Capacity for understanding yes. this? Yes. Sir. Okay. And as it's something that to be sort of basically used or basically practiced also, is it based on capacity or it has a relationship based on purity? Okay. And then another question also? Yes, Sheikh. The second question, basically, he said some philosophers, basically, or the major philosophers, they have a, a distinctive uh, sort of uh, approach in defining the human being as basically the animal. He said, however, uh, uh, when we try to sort of basically go through certain ha hadith, such the hadith of uh, Sheikh Kulaini, he said one of the hadith speaks of Adam. He was the one uh, who took the responsibility, basically, and chosen, basically, the intellect. He said, how could Adam, السلام, selected uh, the intellect as a choice without reasoning or without, basically, having the sort of the ability or the tools of the intellect? So... Uh for understanding justice, if I understood the question correctly, for understanding justice, you need intellect, but also many times you need l to learn. For example, if you want to know whether this employee is treated with justice, you need to know many things. You need to know the market you know, the, the, you know the labor you know for example law etc yeah you cannot just be a very intelligent person and say this is just or unjust okay if you want to know for example what is happening between uh, countries you need to know international law yes some of the things are very basic you know that by all standards this cannot be right when for example you know women and children are being killed no one say, you know, this is, you know, subjective. This is, you know, too complicated. No. When it comes to such a level, it's basic humanity. Either you are, you know, accepting humanity or not. But sometimes you need training, you need to, you know, experience, etc. So justice needs intellect, but also needs uh, training. And many times not necessarily but unfortunately most of the time when people are not free from their own interests they cannot have objective understanding of justice i'm not saying impossible but it's very difficult for someone who is biased or selfish to free himself at least when he is judging and say i don't let my you know personal background to interfere Sometimes, even if they don't want that interfere, unconsciously it inf interferes. So, purity is also very helpful. Uh, this is why, for example, if there is an issue between two people, they don't ask someone who is a friend or relative of one side to judge. Even if he's the best judge of the city, he should not judge between two sides when one of them is related to him, okay? So, this is about justice. Uh, about the second question, uh, there is no problem that uh, Adam salam, used aql and with aql also chose aql. Like now, if someone asks us, for example, is it aql better or money better? Yeah, we can use aql and say aql is better. There's no problem, right? if I understood your question. So he had already aqd. Uh, you know, he used his intellect, he chose his intellect, because 
Au départ, je m'étais dit que c'était par la science du coup qu'il était arrivé à, à pouvoir choisir, c'est-à-dire l'inspiration divine immédiatement, qu'il a pu choisir l'intellect. Et je me, je me réfère aussi à beaucoup de, de, de philosophes soufis tels que Ibn Arabi et autres qui ont mentionné que l'intellect juste, servait juste à, à faire en conscience des trucs ou faire des liens entre les, entre les choses. Puis j'ai vu un hadith aussi rapporté par Ashran dans le groupe dans lequel il disait que euh, même Jafar Sadir, euh, il, avait, il, il a dit que la connaissance était seulement une illumination du cœur. C'est-à-dire genre comme Dieu mettait euh, uniquement la connaissance dans le cœur. Ça, ça je veux faire référence à ce qu'il est son, son, son cœur.